Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections, and it can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the workflow for designing bent plate connections for the purposes of resisting shear reactions. We will now turn our attention to the RAM Connection Standalone application where we will be assigning a basic bent plate shear connection to a beam column joint and also a beam girder joint. What's important to understand about this type of connection template is it does require that a skew angle be assigned to our beam member. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and start with joint number six in the sample model. Now this model does have a skew angle assigned to the beam that's framing into this column and a shear reaction is being imposed upon it. To start the design process, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the assign icon. In the connection assignment dialog, we're going to go ahead and choose a basic connection. Now the bent plate option is only available through a basic connection workflow. Once we're in the basic connection area, we are going to be looking for the acronym BP for bent plate. And we're going to start with a bolted connection. Once we've selected the database that we want to work with, we'll go ahead and click the assign button. Now we can see that a connection has been assigned to the currently selected joint. Now in the joint selection area, we're going to be able to see the status of the connection design. Here we can see that the controlling interaction ratio is 0.88. Now although this interaction ratio is less than 1.0, it is indicated in yellow, meaning that a warning was encountered during the connection process. Let's go ahead and access the connection pad to review the information assigned to this connection and then make any adjustments as needed. To start that process, we will go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, followed by shear connection. Now here, taking a look at the graphic, I can see that more than likely, the geometry of this bent plate is not quite working for the depth of this beam member. If I wanted to confirm that information, I can click on the results icon to get a detailed report. Here I can see that the length of the bent plate is larger than the maximum value, and this is what yielded the warning for this particular connection. So let's go ahead and close out of the connection pad and let's make some adjustments. Here, if I scroll down, I can see the bent plate information. Now here I'll be able to see the material assigned to the bent plate and also the plate thickness and whether or not we're using a double plate or a single. Then on the beam side, I can see the relevant information and also that information on the support side. Now the length of the bent plate will be defined by the spacing of your bolts and your quantity of bolts. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here we can see the number of bolt, bolts and we could see the pitch and the vertical and horizontal edge distance. This is what's going to define the length of this plate. If I try to reduce the number of bolts, then what will happen is it will go ahead and recalculate the length of the plate. And I'm going to want to do that on both the beam size and the column size to see that change take place. Now, once I make that change, I can see that the interaction ratio has been updated and it's in red, meaning that an error was counted, meaning that an error was encountered during the connection design process. When you receive an error, it basically means that that connection failed the code check. 
Again, I can take a look at that and I could see that it bolt shear and bolt bearing under shear load is what pushed it over the edge. Let's go ahead and close this and I could re review any other parameters that I think might help alleviate this issue. For this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and change my bolt size to one inch diameter bolts. Now I can see that just making that change has increased my capacity of the connection and I'm now passing Now just making that change on the beam side has indicated that I am now passing the connection design. Now if I like the changes I've made in the connection pad, I can go ahead and click on the save icon. What this will do is it'll save all those changes I made to this particular connection and it will be available when I print my reports and create my details. Once I'm done, let's go ahead and close out of the connection pad and I can see that my interaction ratio has been updated and the graphic of my connection design has been updated. Let's go ahead and also assign a bent plate to a beam girder connection. Again, for joint number seven, my beam is skewed as it goes into the girder and the beam is has a shear reaction imposed upon it. To assign a connection, We'll go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Again, we're going to be looking for the option for BP bolted connection. We're going to select that connection template and then click the assign button. Once a connection has been assigned, we should be able to see the information be updated in both the graphical view and the status of the connection design in the joint selection area. Here I can see that my connection design has passed the code check, my interaction ratio is less than 1.0, and it is in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered through the design process. At this point, this concludes our process for assigning a bent plate connection to both a beam column and a beam girder joint that has a skewed beam assigned to it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.